Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a rayon sarong. I got the sarong from Dharma Trading Company, and I wanted to put the picture in the beginning like I normally do, but it wouldn't let me. So I will put a link for it down below in the description box, and you guys can go and check that out and see for yourself what it looks like. Off camera, I started by folding this in half. So I folded it in half once, and then I folded it in half again, making a square. Gosh, I should have recorded it because you, I don't know, you don't want to accordion fold it in half and then accordion fold it in half again. You need to make a square. So you fold it in half like horizontally and then fold it in half vertically. I hope that makes sense. And then you find your center point. And all I'm doing right now is I'm airplane folding it. And you want to make sure to keep your center point held down because it'll come like undone because the center point is important. So you'll see me periodically go and check my center point to make sure that it's still nice and tight. And then I make my fold. Sorry guys, this thing is really big and doesn't really fit on my table and I'm trying really hard to keep my head out of it, but it's not really working. So if you've done it correctly, on one side you're going to have many folds and then on the other side you're just going to have two. Okay, now what I did to prepare for this was I binge watched uh, Raya's tie dye. So she has some really in-depth long tutorials. This was a long time ago uh, when she was still doing like the teaching tutorials and she explains the beginning steps very well, much better than I just did. And then I used clips to clip it down because I wanna make sure that my folds don't come undone. And I'm just using a washable marker to mark out the mandala center but you'll soon see here that I don't follow those lines at all. Once I got tying it, um, it just sort of spoke to me and did whatever it wanted to do, so I just went with it. I've never made one of these, you guys, so I'm honestly winging it the entire way through. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm just going to let this play out, and if there are some points that I need to try to explain, I will try to explain it. But to be totally honest with you, I don't even know what I'm doing. So how can I explain what I'm doing? You know what I mean? So mandalas are not my forte, I don't make them. I think they're really pretty, but they're just not my particular style. And you know, I always say have fun tie dyeing. Well, it's really important that you make what you like to do because it shows in the final results. You know, if you don't enjoy what you're making, it's probably not going to look very good, right? So I'm not following my lines like I had mentioned. Um, you know, the, the mandala bits just started like forming on their own. So I'm wrapping the sinew at a diagonal and I'm just sort of zigzagging back and forth at different, you know, different angles back and forth. And for those of you that make these all the time, you might be shouting at the screen right now saying you're not adding enough sinew. Well, what I'm going to do is work my way all the way down to the tip and then I'm going to work my way back to the starting point, reinforcing those sinew lines. So these little nubs are getting really small. Um, I guess I'm doing the go big or go home method. You know, I admire all the guys that make these on a regular basis and all of their little mandala nubs are super tiny at the tip. Um, you know, you just gotta go for it, I guess. You know, I'm referring to people like, um, you know, Carl and um, Steven and Justin and 
Josh and Jake and everybody else's name that makes all these and I haven't mentioned uh, Moon Dipper tie-dye she makes beautiful tapestries um, gosh I'm leaving everybody out but I, I admire everyone's work and you know they make awesome mandalas so I'm trying you just got to jump in with both feet and give it a go because you don't know until you try and you won't learn until you try So for this next part, I really wasn't quite sure where to go. So I was just folding the fabric back and forth and just seeing which way felt more comfortable to tie it off. And I think that first fold right there is called a Ron Star fold. And I could be totally not getting that correct. I am not 100% sure because I have not done one of those either. But if I was to continue to fold back and forth the whole way down, I believe that's called a Ron Starfold. Correct me if I'm wrong. Since I didn't really have a plan for this one, I'm just kind of testing out the fabric again to see how does it feel comfortable to fold. And right there I felt like I could probably make that bend, so I'm going to give it a try. One thing I could maybe advise on is maybe have a little bit of a game plan before you start making one of these um, you can maybe draw it out on a piece of paper prior you know or you know um, when we were little kids and we made snowflakes folded the paper up and then cut out just random patterns I've decided that tapestries essentially are giant snowflakes so if you were to maybe fold it up on a piece of paper and cut out some shapes, you can open it up and have an idea of, you know, what it might look like. And maybe next time I'll try that. Um, because as I'm going along, not everything goes so smoothly. And I have left a lot of this in because I feel like since this is a, you know, a learning opportunity, you guys can watch me through trial and error to see what worked, what didn't work, how I shifted gears and corrected things and, and whatnot. So I wasn't really happy with the way that fold was going. And I also realized this is a giant 44 by 72 inch piece of fabric. It's not a t-shirt. I have room to make big pleats. So I decided that I was going to attack it from the other side with a much larger shape. You'll notice me periodically checking the back. What I'm looking for is to make sure that all of my sinew is laying flat on top of each other. That's what's going to create the nice white line. And I'm pulling it really tight. It's kind of difficult on this because the folds are very thick. Um, so you just gotta keep wrapping it and pulling it as absolutely as tight as you can. And now I'm moving on, I'm making another shape. And I was hoping to have like flower petals on this. So that's kind of the, the shape that I was drawing. Kind of looks like a, like a half of a teardrop. I started out with a continuous run of sinew and I quickly realized that I wasn't happy with that. Two reasons, it just wasn't working out. Uh, the sinew was getting all tangled up. And then secondly, I got to thinking, I don't wanna have any white lines on the back of this. So I decided to cut the sinew and I'm going to take each uh, section individually.
If you notice that little edit right there, I needed to walk away for a little bit. I, I had to tend to something. So then I just came back and I picked right up where I left off. So while I was checking the back on this with the sinew, I noticed that it wasn't lining up very well. Um, it was all kind of bunched up because I wasn't pulling it quite tight enough. So I just backed the sinew off and I rewrapped it. It's super important that you have that nice crisp white line if, you, if that's what you're looking for. If you're not looking for the white lines in your project, you could just simply tie this off with rubber bands, make it easy on yourself. But I wanted to have the really crisp white lines. For this back part, I decided just to do a simple pleated accordion fold. You could scrunch it, you could spiral it, you can do whatever you want back here. And then I'm just going to simply secure it by using my second favorite rubber bands. Yay, finally, my favorite part, we get to add the die. So I will tell you, I did let this sit out overnight before adding the die, just as a precaution. Most of you know that I die damp, but I thought, oh, I wanna make sure I have good saturation, and since it's an ice die, shouldn't be that big of a deal. I do not like doing liquid dye on dry shirts. It's just terrible, but we'll save that for a liquid dye shirt. So I started out, with using the sea foam on the center of the mandala. My thought process for that is I want to have a glowing center. And then that nub where I added the sea foam, same thing. So that's going to hopefully be one of the flower petals and I want the center of it to glow with a light color and then have a dark edge around it. And for this, well, it's not a tapestry, but it's a tapestry to me. But for this project, I chose all of my favorite colors. So if you're brand new to tie dyeing and you're wondering what colors you should get from Dharma Trading Company, you cannot go wrong by ordering these colors. They are absolutely beautiful and I use them all the time. So the same thing for this nub over here. I'm going with the lighter shade Orchid and then I'm going to go back in next to it with the darker shade Red Violet, hoping for that glowing center with a darker edge. And I'll tell you guys, normally when I'm adding the dye, it's a completely stress-free, happy experience. I'm just loving every minute of it. I'm just totally into it. I was stressed out on this one because I don't know what's going to happen, which is also very exciting because I don't know what's going to happen, but I wasn't really sure where to place the colors or any of that. So we're along for the ride. This does turn out really beautiful. Um, don't fast forward though, you gotta watch the whole thing. I was just rambling and I forgot to tell you something important. So I added that little bit of blue violet in between the deep purple and the jade green and this is the reason why. So my thought process is a lot of times purple and green don't play well together they can sort of create brown. And a little bit of brown is not a bad thing, you guys. I don't, we gotta stop being so afraid of it. But I do try to avoid it if possible. So I thought that blue and the blue violet would, you know, temper between the two colors. So we got deep purple, jade green, you put blue in between of them, blue and green goes well together, blue and purple goes well together, should be a win-win, right? So when you guys are adding your colors to your projects, do you just go like totally carefree like I normally do? Or are you really methodical and plan it out and think it out? Um, I do both, but I have a lot of fun putting colors together that make absolutely no sense. And usually they turn out pretty funky and I love it. Can you guys tell that I love playing in the dye? So when I'm folding it, my energy level's kind of like, meh. 
But when I'm playing in the die and I'm editing it and I'm watching myself back add the die, I'm like super amped up. I remember like how I was feeling, you know, adding the die. So right there I added the jade green and I'm glad that I did. It's an afterthought and it works out at the end really well. So now I'm just giving the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and then I'm going to add my ice. And I can tell you that when I added the ice, I ran out of ice. Like it my it would just the project's a lot bigger than it looks. Um, so I came back as soon as my ice machine filled back up and I added a second layer of ice. I filled it all the way up to the top of the foil. It's recommended by Dharma Trading Company that you batch your project at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. After the first layer of ice melted, I came back and I checked it. It had really good saturation on the back, but there was a ton of undissolved dye. So I just thought, for good measure, I'm going to add a second layer of ice. And then I let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melted. Now it's time for the rinse out. You wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Now at 48 hours with an ice dye, there probably isn't a lot of soda ash still reacting, but I still go through the motions because I don't want the dark colors to redeposit onto my light colors, so I make sure to get the soda ash all the way out. And then the hot water just breaks loose any unbonded dye so it goes down into your drain instead of into your washing machine. I wash many things together and I don't want to have a bunch of murky muddy water, you know, creating a mess on my lighter colors. Okay, so I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirillon, a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. It's usually about two hot water cycles. Then I do a third or a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And I should mention that whenever I wash anything rayon, I put it inside of a garment bag and you can find a link for it down below in the description box. And then I let my uh, rayon air dry and I'll iron it and we'll come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. What do you think? I can tell you that I'm absolutely in love with this sarong. It's, it's not a sarong to me. It's a tapestry, but it's not, it's a sarong. I love it. It is so beautiful and it turned out so much better than I, had even anticipated that it would. I hoped it would be this pretty, but it has ex exceeded my, my wildest dreams. I love the color combination. I love just everything about it. It doesn't necessarily look like flower petals, but whatever it looks like is totally amazing to me. I love this thing. And this uh, reveal right here is longer than normal, just so you can really like take in all of its beauty. Now, I can pick it apart and say that, you know, there are some saturation issues. Uh, you know, some have a much darker, heavier saturation and others have light saturation, but I don't even care. And, you know, some of the uh, dye did break through the sinew barrier, but that's okay. It's, it's still absolutely beautiful to me. To get back to the sarong aspect of this, because that is truly what it is, you know, my pattern isn't necessarily complementary to it being a sarong. You probably shouldn't have your mandala right on the rear end portion of it. So when you make yours, take into consideration where the pattern is going to fall on the body. Um, wrapped around the hip, it doesn't look quite as bad, but still it's kind of down on the rear end. But it's so pretty, it doesn't even matter. I'm so super happy that I just went for it and tried it. So if you guys have not made a tapestry or anything large like this, don't be scared. Jump in with both feet first and just have fun with it because look at what you can accomplish if you just try. Overall, I love this thing. What do you guys think about it? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. 
please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.